is Monday, May 20th. I am back from our Hawaii trip and I did not do any shots while I was there. Um, so we got there to Kona, went to Kona on Saturday. I was supposed to take a shot on Sunday. Didn't bring any of my injection materials because I didn't want to bother with it while I was there. So I missed that day and then I go every five days instead of every Sunday. So then what it was like Friday, I guess I was supposed to take another injection. So I missed two injections. So I'm starting at five and I'm using a 30 milligram vial. So I'm going to do five. Then I'm going to do seven probably for two weeks. So that'll be 15 for like a total of 20. And then the third, the fourth injection I'll do from this vial will then be 10 milligrams because that's where I think I started noticing I was losing weight that one time that I did the 10 milligrams. Um, so I'm thinking if I do five, just to make the vial, you know, numbers work out. So it'll be five, seven and a half, seven and a half, ten, 10 for a total of 30 for that vial. Um, my group buy is doing another group buy of 15s. So I am definitely going to stock up during that buy. It's pretty much what it was last time for the 15s. The price really hasn't changed. So I'm going to probably get two kits, which will be 20 vials of 15s. So I should be set for a while um, after that. Um, I was having trouble. Oh, so I weighed myself this morning. I was 261. The last time I did a weigh-in, it was like 257. I was on vacation for a week, so... I'm not really too stressed about it, but I was 261.6 this morning. Um, I was having last, the last couple weeks, heart palpitations that were kind of freaking me out. And I started thinking that maybe it was the Mott's C and I really haven't had them. My ears are all puppy. Um, I really haven't had them this past week while I've been in Hawaii. So I don't know if it was the Mott's C or not. I took an injection of Mott-C right before I took my terzepatide shot, and um, we'll see how that goes. I'll show you guys the video of that, and then I'll show you the video of the terzepatide shot that I took. With the All right, I'm doing my Mott-C shot. I was not doing it for a couple weeks. Well, a couple of shots worth, because I was in Hawaii. But I am doing the five milligrams. I'm at the 0.5 there. This is the one that's a little spicy. Usually leaves a welt. Alrighty, that is the C. Now I'm going to do my terzepatide shot. It's been, I've not gone for two shot worths. So I am starting back out at the five. And as you can see, I'm actually more along with the four line. But since it's overfilled, it's probably close to five or even over. I had two shots that I was doing, so I had to label my uh, syringes. That's why this one says TERS. So I think what's, and there we go. You can see a little bit of a, I have no idea why I've got the moths coming out from the um, injection site. That's interesting. But it's already a little, uh, I wonder if I... Hmm. I gotta figure that out. Shot that I took with the terzepatide shot, when I put it in there, it looked like it was at the five mark, but it must have had a little bit of air in there. So when I regulated it, it um, was then like at the four, which would have been four milligrams. But as we all know, the uh, vials are overdosed, so it probably was five or six, even though it looked like it was four. So roughly five-ish is what we'll call that. 
Um, I am doing the five milligrams of MOTC. That's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday situation. I'll see if the heart palpitations come back. If they do, then I'll just stop taking it. I don't know. It's supposed to be heart protective to like fix things in the body on a cellular um, and even like on a tissue type level. So I'm hopeful that that's not what's causing it, but it would be nice to be able to pinpoint something that was causing those reactions, right? Maybe it was just the stress of an upcoming vacation. I know vacations are supposed to be like getting away from it all, but um, planning a vacation, especially with younger children, that's difficult. The, uh, the flight there was actually not too bad. The flight back, we were supposed to, so we went from Kona to Honolulu, then Honolulu to home. Um, it was supposed to be, we were supposed to leave at 4.30. We had to be out of the unit that we were staying in at 10 a.m. So we had many hours to kill, but we couldn't get really wet. We couldn't get dirty because I didn't want to have to drive or fly home with all that in the suitcases. So we kind of drove around for a little bit. Um, then we stopped off at Costco to fill up the rental car, gas, and... Um, we bought a little bit of snacks there. And then basically we showed up at the airport probably at least three hours early, only to find that our flight had been bumped from 4.30 to basically five o'clock, which wasn't bad um, as far as delays go. So we ate some food. We just hung out for a while. It was hot and muggy. That last day there, um, it was kind of gray and drizzly and rainy, but still hot and still very... Um, very humid, which is just not my jam. I'm not much for humidity, especially if you can't get into the ocean to cool off or a pool or something. So we, it's like an hour flight maybe from Kona to Honolulu. And then at Honolulu, we were supposed to originally get in like at 5.15 or something. And then our flight was going to leave at 6.50. But we got there a little bit late because the start, you know, it was later. So we make sure to get to the right gate and we're there for like 15, 20 minutes. So it's, it's supposed to be getting time to go. Well, then they say, oh, that flight's been delayed from 6.50 to 9.30. So now we've got like almost three hours that we just have to hang out for. And I had already taken one Dramamine for the first flight. And I, was, I took a second one basically when we touched down because I wanted it to kick in before the, you know, six hour flight back home. So then they say, oh, you've got another three hours of delay. And I'm thinking, oh, that's not going to be good. So, man, that drama, I mean, I was tired. Um, then it gets close to uh, 9.30, usually bored, like 15 to 20 minutes before the flight's supposed to leave. Nobody's getting on. They're still doing maintenance on the plane because that was the reason it was for the delay plane maintenance. And then they come out and they say, oh, actually, we'll leave at 10.15. So we're like, trying to keep the kids up, trying to keep ourselves awake. In the meantime, I've had a Coke because I'm, well, half a Coke, because I'm trying to keep myself a little bit more animated. I did not feel well after I did that, so I was not looking forward to it. Finally, we get on the plane. Um, it doesn't take us too long to get on the tarmac. Um, oh, and then some guy was sitting in my seat, so I was like, so I asked a flight attendant, and I said, you know, this guy's sitting in my seat. Can I just sit in this empty seat on this side, it was like one row behind my family. And she's like, well, maybe, but there's still maybe somebody who's getting on the flight that's sitting there. And I said, well, I'll move if they get here. And so somebody came by at the very end and they're like, oh, that's my seat. So I got up. So then this stewardess is trying to figure out where this guy's supposed to be seated. Turns out he was supposed to be seated in the row behind and against the window. Instead, he was in the aisle, um, one row up. There was a kid sitting in his seat, young man, so the stewardess is like, where are you supposed to be? So I don't know if he didn't speak English or if he was just grumpy because he had to give up his window seat. I don't know. But he was actually supposed to be in the aisle, across the aisle in the middle, which nobody likes sitting in the middle. But that's where he was supposed to be. So she made that kid get up, go to his regular seat. The guy that was in my seat moved one row back to the window. And then he was sitting in his seat, his seat so that I could actually get into my seat. So then we get in and we start going and guys, and the, the pilot's like, oh, it's only going to be like five hours and 15 minutes. Um, my kids were able to sleep a little bit. My husband had a couple power naps. I dozed. 
but I did not get good sleep. And uh, I, I just, I don't like flying. Flying freaks me out. Even if it's there, and there were some tur turbulence, but it wasn't bad. It's just, I always think of the worst case scenarios. I always think that the plane's gonna fall apart. You know, we're going to crash into the ocean. I had my kids with me. I was freaking out internally, you know, what would happen to them. And I don't know why I always go to worst case when I'm flying, but I do. So I, I don't like to fly. I, I don't like to drive long distances either because I just hate being in a seat for that long. Like I'm a sedentary individual. That's, there's no question about that, but I can get up. I can, I can walk around the house. I can like go to the grocery store if I need to. When you're trapped like in a plane for six hours and you really can't get up and walk around because they're not these huge multi-aisled jets. They're just, you know, a plane with one aisle. So you really can't get up and do lunges or stretch or whatever. You're supposed to stay in your seat. So I was, I was extremely glad to touch down. So then we touched down back home and it feels like we are on the tarmac forever, just riding around in the plane. I'm starting to get queasy because I'm tired and I get queasy when I'm tired. So I'm tired. The plane's just, you know, it's just like bouncing around because it's just driving everywhere. They finally stop. Well, they don't, they didn't park um, like at a terminal where you could just get off the plane, you go in that corridor and then you're in the building. They parked on the tarmac. So we had to use one of those lift things to get off the tarmac to get off the plane onto the tarmac. Well, then they said that we had to wait for the bus to take us to this outside um, enclosure thing. Sorry, one sec. And uh, so we were waiting for the buses to come and get us. The one bus has already left full of people. Then another bus comes on. We get on that one. Then a third bus pulls in behind ours. And then we're just like waiting there for I don't know how long only to have them take us like a hundred yards to our destination. I'm like, we could have walked that, you know, like five minutes ago. And my dad was picking us up. He's like, what's going on? So we, we walk to this tunnel, this outside tunnel thing that then goes up this ramp that then takes us inside the building. And our uh, airport has a very long, um, tunnel basically before you get to like where the baggage area is I'm wanting to say it's like almost a mile it's it's a long ways so we're walking and I told my dad I'm like just got off the plane and he was like what and I felt bad for him because he'd probably been at the airport in the parking area for like an hour at that point so we go and the good news is by the time we got to the baggage claim our uh, our stuff was ready for us our bags were ready so we were able to pick those up real quick and then head outside. Our dad picked me up, took us all home. I, but then I didn't want to sleep because I wasn't going to be able to sleep in the evening time. So like powered through all day, um, caught my husband almost falling asleep on the couch a couple times by 630. Cause I had said we should all go to bed by eight. He's like, Oh no, just regular time. Well, then I said, all of us are going to bed at nine. So I made sure the kids were done. Everybody was in bed by nine o'clock. I fell asleep super quick. Um, yeah, it's, I was so, so happy to be in my own bed. It was so nice. So we had such a great time and I'll put together like a little video and, and show you guys kind of some of the places that we went. It was beautiful. We really, we really did have a good time. I was a little paranoid about sharks, but, uh, we didn't do any of the, like the, not, not sponsored, but the, where you have to pay for like, uh, snorkel trips and, uh, swimming with the manta rays. That was something that I kind of wanted to do, but it was probably going to be a good four to $500 for all of us to go. And it's at night. And then I, I don't know why, but I started freaking out that sharks were going to come. And I don't think there's really no like great whites, um, off of Hawaii, generally speaking. And they have like, was it tiger sharks, but they're kind of few and far between. And I don't think they necessarily come to where these manta, uh, manta ray tours are done. But you know, my youngest, he's, he just turned nine. So he's younger. And I just kept having these visions of him being snatched away by a shark. And, you know, and you know, if you have kids, you probably imagine some gruesome ways for your kids to go. So I just kept thinking about that. And I'm like, I just, I just, I don't feel comfortable. So 
we didn't do any of those, but we did do some snorkeling on our own. Um, we swam in the beach, on the beach, off the beach, whatever. Um, there was a pool where we were staying, so the boys got in a lot of pool time. We traveled all over the island um, to the Hilo side, and we saw um, saw turtles at the black sand beaches. So it was really fun. I'll put together a video and I'll show you guys. All that to say, um, I am back on the wagon and hopefully I can start getting some of this weight off. I do want to do more hikes as it turns into summer. Um, I don't have a lot of stamina at this stage and I am hoping with shedding some weight, I can do that. My dad's lost like another three pounds, he said, so I'm super proud of him. Um, he's on the 7.5 milligrams of trisepatide, and it seems like that's a sweet spot for him. He's usually losing between one and three pounds um, every five days between shots. So he's losing um, fairly slowly, but still a significant more amount more than I have, even though he started after me. That's how it goes, right? Okay, guys, this video has turned out longer than I intended, and I will see you next time. Bye.